Hello and welcome to my race preview for the Belgian Grand Prix in Spa for 2013. It's been a very long time since the last F1 race in Hungary. I just really hate the summer breaks, they just go on for too long. I just want to get back to the racing. But um, yeah, there's not been much news coming out of uh, the summer break. Um, there's really only been the rumour that Daniel Ricciardo is going to announce his signing with Red Bull for next season. Uh, speaking of that, what do you guys think about that? Do you think Red Bull made the right decision in going for Daniel Ricciardo? Or would you have gone for maybe a Kimi Raikkonen to really have two lead drivers in one team? But sometimes that can be a bit counterproductive and sometimes it can hinder team performances. But uh, I can see where Red Bull are going there with picking Daniel, maybe being the second driver, maybe being in a support role to, to Sebastian. But who knows, time will time will tell if uh, if it works next year but uh, for Daniel it's definitely being it's definitely better than being in that crappy tour also so hopefully he can score some podiums and maybe the old race win once he gets up to speed but um let's get into this race preview for Spa the standings uh, Sebastian Vettel has a clear lead over Kimi Raikkonen and he's on 172 with Kimi Raikkonen 38 points behind on 134 it's really only a battle for second to be honest because Kimi, uh, Fernando and Lewis Hamilton are, are all about 10 points separated, the, the three of them, and, and Vettel's just streaking away, really. So, at this stage, it's not looking good for um, anyone who is a fan of uh, you know the other guys except for Vettel. So, I really hope that maybe the other guys can challenge Red Bull and Vettel over the next two rounds. It's their best shot, really, because you'd have to say that um, Spa and Monza don't exactly suit Red Bull, but if if Vettel gets out in pole and you know does his short gearbox trick and just pulls away, then you know they can be unstoppable and they've proved that in the past. So hopefully that doesn't happen this weekend and in the the next round. But um, Spa it's a pretty high downforce track. Um, or no, it's not a high downforce track. Sorry, it's a high speed track with low downforce. Um, you might see teams using the passive DRS. You know, I've seen a few articles um, rumoring that Lotus might be testing it if they can get it to work. A few other teams might be trying it as well to see if there's any advantage there. It'll definitely help in qualifying, that's for sure. But Bar's definitely going to, you know, tell your outright form for, for Monza as well. So if any teams are going to challenge Red Bull, they've got to do it now because the championship is really getting away from them. But uh, here in Spa, the qualifying will be crucial because um, teams will really need to out-qualify Red Bull um, if they're going to, you know, challenge for the race. Because if Red Bull just gets out in front, then they'll use their shorter gears and they'll just pull away, you know, like they haven't in the past. So um, if, if, like, a Lewis Hamilton or a Fernando Alonso can out-qualify Vettel, then the Red Bulls will really struggle to pass with the DRS because their gearbox will be so short. And I think we've seen it last year. I think Vettel was really struggling, struggling to come through the field um, because of that that problem so it'll be interesting to see what happens if if Vettel qualifies down the order yeah Lotus they might be a dark horse this race they'll need to improve on their qualifying pace that's for sure and um, I think they'll need to improve on their hard tire pace as well because uh, it's, it's been average and especially with the low temperatures I don't think that really suits Lotus to be honest they sort of thrive in higher um, hotter temperatures so it'll be interesting to see because Spa uh, generally has lower temperatures than most of the tracks on the calendar that we go to so it'll be interesting but uh, in my opinion I think Mercedes is going to be the favorite to win this weekend Mercedes are just so quick in qualifying um, you know they've got a lot of momentum with Lewis Hamilton winning last round I think Lewis if you might have to correct me if I'm wrong no no it was Jensen Button who won last year he streaked away never mind but um yeah, I think the cooler temperatures will also suit Mercedes as well. So, um, yeah, they're my favourite to win this weekend. Ferrari, they definitely need to improve. I think over the break, Fernando was <laughs> at his birthday and he was um, complaining that he needs a new car. So, uh, we'll see what happens out of that. But, um, you know, if Ferrari continue to have poor form, then who knows what Fernando Alonso's morale will, will be like and that of the team. It's going to be interesting to see what happens there. I uh, certainly don't think he's going to move teams because Ferrari have built their team around Fernando and he's just not going to get that at any other team because but let's have a look. Uh, Lotus, they've built their team around Kimi. Um, Red Bull is completely built around um, Sebastian and there's really no other big teams except for Mercedes. 
which have Lewis Hamilton there, and then there's McLaren who are struggling. So Fernando's really got nowhere to go unless he feels like being a second fiddle to Sebastian Vettel, which apparently might that seat might be taken up already. So yeah, <laughs> make of that where you will. But uh, Toro Rosso, um, I think they're going to surprise a few people this weekend. Generally, their car has a, has good straight line speed. They tend to run a lower downforce kind of setup, so that this track might really suit them. And if they can get the strategy right and have the same amount, have equal amount of luck, then who knows where they might end up? They might, you know, get a double points finish with Ricardo and Vern, uh, McLaren. Who knows with them? They're up and down all the time. Um, Jensen Button, you know, I'm sure he'd love his 2012 car from last year. After what we saw in 2012, he just dominated the whole race. He's just, just untouchable. I'm sure <laughs> he wouldn't mind just unboxing his old 2012 car and just rolling that out and just dominating again. But unfortunately, they're stuck with their 2013 car, aren't they? So, yeah, I've got nothing really else to say about the other, other teams. Um, you know, so what else have we got to talk about? The tyres. The tyres that are going to be used this weekend are the medium and the hard compound tyres. So I think maybe uh, the one to two stop strategy will probably be the optimal strategy for this race, especially with the cooler temperatures. Um, honestly, I can't really see anyone doing three stops. That would just be too slow. So, yeah, that's that's all I have to say really about that. But my top ten prediction for this weekend, I have Kimi Raikkonen to take the win. I'm really going for a bold move there. Uh, I have Sebastian Vettel in second with Lewis Hamilton in third. Romain Grosjean, who's in a bit of form recently, um, I'll put him in fourth. He might may even sneak a podium. Who knows? Uh, Mark Webber in fifth. Fernando Alonso in sixth. Uh, I know I have him down a little bit, but, you know, just based on form and what's going on recently, I think he'll be around about there. Uh, Nico Rosberg in seventh with Paul DeResta, uh, Jensen Button, and Daniel Ricciardo rounding out the top ten. And I have, for pole position, I've got Lewis Hamilton, I think. Mercedes are probably going to get pole this weekend if it's not Red Bull. So, yeah, that's all I have to say about this uh, <laughs> this weekend for my preview. Uh, it should be a good one. I'm just really looking forward to the race this weekend. It's been such a long time since the last race. And um, Spa is just an iconic track. It's You'd have to say that there is a lot of overtaking at this tra track. Um, so it should be a very interesting round. And... Um, yeah, I'm very much looking forward to it. So, what's your prediction for the top 10 or maybe even the top 3? That should be a little bit easier. Uh, what do you make of the Daniel Ricciardo thing? Do you think he's really going to Red Bull or is it Kimi Raikkonen or maybe even someone else? But, um, yeah, let me know what you think. And um, until my next video, I'll see you next time.